Good morning. Good morning. Well, welcome to worship on this second Sunday in Easter. My name is Pastor Kristen Schmidt. A very warm welcome to anyone joining us online and also uh, welcome to everyone here today. Um, first and foremost, I wanted to say such a, a very heartfelt um, thank you to everyone for all your uh, support and prayers while I was with my, my dad at the end of his life. Um, just very much appreciated. Um, and as I told some of you, I was able to give him communion and to care for him and to be with him at the end. And that was just a, a real profound blessing. Um, so I'm so grateful for all that. And I appreciate um, just every, everything everybody did to just keep everything going. And, and uh, so thank you so much. Um, and we do have, so we have um, a, a prayer update for, um, for you. So we are praying for Jan as she, um, we're anticipating an angiogram on Monday to check out her heart. She went into the hospital Thursday with some trouble breathing. And so they're just kind of getting things sorted out. So we will keep praying for her for healing and for some answers. Um, and so that, that she you can get back to feeling better soon. So that's where she is. And we are, of course, thinking of her and praying for her. Um, do we have any additional prayer requests for this morning? Okay. Um, and for our announcements, we do have here uh, this afternoon at St. Peter's at 1 p.m. open to anybody. We have our suicide prevention training, and we're going to have that here in the sanctuary. It'll be uh, just for an hour, and there'll be time for questions afterwards. Um, and that's just so that we can be educated on knowing the signs of when someone is struggling and, and the resources that we can connect them with. Um, this coming Thursday, we've got our joint council meeting, and that is going to be at 615, and then we'll have our regular council meeting after that. And looking ahead um, to April 21st, there's going to be a spiritual gifts carry-in and class over at Faith. And this is just a fun time where we learn about how God has uniquely designed each one of us. Um, sometimes we end up, if we're doing things and we may not always know per, uh, how we're in particularly designed or what we're called to do at this point in our lives. So everyone is invited to that. Um, I also, I wanted to say thank you to everybody for everyone who, who participated in our Lenten services, um, who attended or sang or donated or helped with food, um, with our midweek services. That was really great. And we were able to, each, for each week, we, uh, we sent our offering to our different speakers. Um, and that was with Emmaus and um, with Weekday Religious Education and with the Isaiah 117 house that supports foster children um, and with Faithful Friends of Carol Manor and Kokomo Rescue Michigan. And if you saw in the email, we were able to send money to each of those organizations. So thank you all for your help with that. Um, do we have any other announcements for today? Okay. Well, with that, we'll quiet our minds and our hearts and begin our worship together. And I invite you to stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. 
To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Real quick on this, I forgot to mention something at the very beginning, but 
I've decided we're going to try something a little different. So let's just sing. We'll sing this thing all the way through. Everybody sing both parts. If you don't want to, you can just sing the bold part. But um, the leader part is the non-bold stuff. But it might be better if we just sing. Everybody just sing through it together. So, and this is the one we've done before. So once you hear it, it'll be like, oh yeah, that one. <laughs> okay, yeah. Without uh, the feet. <laughs> we'll see, won't we? <laughs> and thank you, Tim. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, hello there, Matt, and happy Easter. We have seven, we're in our second of seven Sundays of Easter, so you're going to hear that a lot. And I saw that you guys found the Alleluia. That And sometimes it's hard to believe something if we haven't seen it with our eyes or heard it or touched it with our hands. We think, is that really true? For example, David, you didn't see this. And I told Anne, and your grandma said, hey, the Catholic Christian has fruit snacks. But she thought, I haven't seen any fruit snacks myself. And maybe my grandma is just teasing me, right? You might think, well, I, I wasn't an eyewitness she saw them, but I haven't seen them. So you might doubt, right? You might think, hmm, I'm not so sure about that. Maybe she's being Catholic teaching me, but maybe. <laughs> maybe, I don't know.
You knew it. Okay, so you know, right? See, you know, sometimes we're not so sure, right? We're like, I'm not so sure if what they're saying is true. You know what I'm talking about. Well, in one of our Bible stories, so Jesus, after he rose from the dead, he came and he saw all his friends, and and then he went away. And then there was a, a, a follower of Jesus named Thomas who wasn't there, and so he didn't see Jesus, and he was like, I'm not so sure about this. Like, I didn't see it with my own eyes. I wasn't an eyewitness. And then Jesus came back and says, you know what? That's okay. It really is me, and I'm here. And then Thomas was like, I really think it's you. So I have a question for you. Do you think that sometimes it may be that it's hard to, to trust Jesus or you have you have questions about it? Do you think that Jesus gets mad at us? about God or we don't know, but that's okay. But yeah, no, Jesus doesn't get mad. He said, that's okay. I'm right here. So we can trace him. And he answers our question. So that's something to remember. We okay to have questions. <laughs> and, and, you're lucky. There was no, there was no mean trick. It was not, um, not cookie, but they, they leave a lot of crumbs in my bag. But I do have cookies. The first lesson for today is taken from the fourth chapter of Acts, beginning at the 32nd verse. While the apostles testified to others about the resurrection of Jesus, the early Christian community shared what they owned, sold their possession, to help their fellow believers who were in need. The reading, now the whole world group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and with great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds to what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each and every one who had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like It is like the dew of Hermon flowing down upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. The second reading for today is taken from the first chapter of First John, beginning at the first verse. The opening of this letter serves as a reality check. The reality of God is light but our confessed reality has been sin. God cleanses us from our sinful reality through Christ's death so that we live in fellowship with Christ and walk in God's light. 
the reading, we declare to you what was from the beginning, what we've heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed. We have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we've seen and heard so that you may also you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there's no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we shall have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from un all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. The story of Easter continues as the risen Jesus appears to his disciples. His words to Thomas offer a blessing to all who entrust themselves in faith to the risen Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the religious authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Well, thanks to Kevin Robeson, I recently saw a cartoon that reminded me of today's gospel reading. 
it shows a, a group of people are seated and they're talking and you can, you can see the crosses in the distance and, and the man in the center is saying, I knew he was really special, but dead men don't come back. And then the speaker says, he's standing behind me, isn't he? Sure enough, you see a figure behind him, arms crossed. Now, Jesus could certainly walk up behind any of us, let alone the disciples who fled when he was arrested and crucified, and speak words of critique or reproach or disappointment. But instead, as we see in today's gospel, he offers peace and forgiveness and invitation. In today's reading from John, a bunch of important things are summed up very quickly. So after appearing to Mary Magdalene, the risen Jesus then appears to his disciples and he shares peace. He shows them the scars from his death. He gives them the Holy Spirit and he commissions them as apostles. Whew, that is a lot. And this all takes place Easter evening in Jerusalem. And the disciples are afraid that the same Jerusalem authorities who killed Jesus will harm them as well. And it is important to note that the initial accounts correctly blamed the Roman government for Jesus' crucifixion. And so it was only later that the anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic explanations developed. Now, the disciples who have also, they have also lost their beloved leader. So they are in a place of fear and grief. They are literally hidden behind locked doors. And Jesus appears among them. And he does not blame or judge or question them. Instead, he says, peace be with you. Now, this was a standard greeting for the time, and it was based on shalom, which is the Hebrew word, and this is a, a Jewish concept of peace and wholeness and goodness, and this also describes God. And we can see peace to you throughout scripture, and it's used to offer reassurance when, when people have encountered messengers from God and they are afraid. And the peace to you that Jesus offers in John's gospel today. This is more than just a, a greeting or that automatic, hey, how are you doing? This statement that he makes, he is declaring what is true, that God is peace, and he is bringing it about. When Jesus says peace, he gives it to his followers. He makes it happen. And in, when he does this, he is fulfilling the promise that he made to them before his crucifixion. So in his last words to his disciples before his arrest, in one of my favorite verses, Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So this is in a direct contrast to the Roman Empire's peace. You might have heard the phrase Pax Romana because that peace was made possible by violence. And, and back then, before he died, Jesus promised that they would be sent the Holy Spirit who would teach them. And so in today's reading, we see him making good on that promise. And this peace that Jesus gives along with the power of the Holy Spirit that he breathes on them, this allows the disciples to move past their fear and to become apostles, sharing God's peace with others. So in today's gospel, we are witnessing a new creation. We know that back in Genesis, God breathes and gives life to the human creature. And so now on this Easter evening, God and Jesus Christ breathes, giving the Holy Spirit an eternal life to his disciples, which includes all of us. So, so what do we do with Easter? How do we make sense of this enormous event? As always, Jesus' words and actions 
are our guide. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. So we start with peace. We, get, we begin with Jesus' peace for ourselves, and we share it with our neighbors. And I invite you to think about what peace feels like for you. Maybe it's fishing in your favorite place. Maybe it's a conflict-free family gathering. Maybe it's time with pets. Peace might be a quiet time in the morning, early morning or time spent with loved ones or in worship. Sometimes we have peace in nature. It's different for each one of us. We usually feel peace when we are free from worry and pain, and when we are able to experience wonder and love and joy. Notice that the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Now, their circumstances had not changed. They're still hiding in the locked room, but Jesus brought them peace and joy. God's peace is for all different times, for times that are special and ordinary, times that are troubled or serene. And, and this peace is meant for all aspects of our well-being. Whatever might get in the way of us being able to experience peace in our body or mind or spirit. Because Jesus spoke out against an oppressive system that harmed people's bodies and lives. And so this peace that he brings and he calls his disciples to share, this extends beyond people's inner lives to their daily physical existence in the world as well. Jesus' death and resurrection is not only about bringing individual transformation for each person, but also about pointing the way towards God's path of abundant life for all people. So what does peace feel like? An absence of fear? And what does peace look like? One idea might be when our hands stop grasping tight to protect ourselves and open up so that what we have flows to others. And what does peace sound like? Being comforted and welcomed. Worldly peace is an absence of concerns. Godly peace is that same feeling of calm strength, even when our concerns are present. God's peace seeks us out and finds us even when we are physically, emotionally, or mentally barricaded and afraid. Now, Jesus relied on this peace for himself when he knew that his earthly life was about to end. He trusted that God would be with him even though his friends would abandon him and his enemies would kill him. And Jesus offered peace even to those he knew would take it from him. In John 16, he said, The hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, each one to his home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have said this to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage, I have conquered the world. And he has conquered the world. This is good news. Authors Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan say that Easter has two key meanings. Number one, Jesus lives. He continues to be present and active in the world. His followers continue to know and experience him. Jesus lives. Number two, God has vindicated Jesus. God has said yes to Jesus and no to the powers who executed him. What does Easter and this peace Jesus brings 
mean for us. It is the peace of knowing that our loved ones who have passed are with God and that one day we will be too. It is the peace of knowing that evil and disease and death do not have the final say. God's love does, and that love lasts forever. Easter can be easy to take for granted, and perhaps a way to celebrate and appreciate the Easter season is to consider the alternative, life without Easter. Imagine remaining mired in our own inability to perceive God and to turn back to God. Imagine remaining trapped in fear and worry. Imagine that the inequity and injustice of our world is insurmountable. Imagine having no lasting peace. Because of Easter, we have the opposite. We have new life with Jesus now and eternal life with him after death. We have the gift of being restored to relationship with God and the peace and joy that brings. With the resurrection, death is overcome and our Christian witness begins. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are enabled to do God's work, to build God's kingdom of love and justice for all creation. It can be difficult to, to grasp the enormity of Easter, of Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. Easter becomes real for us when we embrace and share the peace Jesus offers. Peace be with you. I invite you to stand for our hymn of the day.
Now with the whole church, let us confess our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten, begotten of the Father, God from God, light from right, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we begin our prayers of intercession, I also invite our online worshipers to let us know of their prayer requests. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Near to us this day, breathe on us your Holy Spirit that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. God of grace, your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Thank you for the lengthening daylight of spring, which stirs new life and reminds us of the light you bring into the world through the gift of Jesus Christ. Nurture growing things and those who tend them. God of grace, your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person that no one may need to live in fear. We pray for the people of Ukraine, Haiti, and the Middle East, and for military personnel, especially those close to our congregations, Blaine, Daniel, Nathaniel, and Joey. We lift up this day all in need of God's comfort and healing, especially Jane and Fred, Judy, Chad, David and Alice, Kim, Brenda, Terry, Karen, Pastor Paul, Fran, Tom, Janice, the friends and family of Greg Schmid. We also pray for Marklin, Richard and Nina, Jenny, Lou, Pastor Larry and Kay, Jan, Delight, Dinah and Julie, Carol, Steve, Keith, Kenzie, Raul, Mark, Holly, Susan and Rick, Melody, Alfonso and Mercedes, Tom, Arlen, Marie, Emily, Josh, David, and Margot. We lift up all those who are on our hearts. God of grace, your people cry out, O God, and you listen. We pray for our fellow children of Abraham celebrating Holy Days this month, Ramadan for people of Islamic faith on Tuesday, and Passover for observant Jews later this month. God of grace. Your congregations cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Renew all who helped with Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace. We lift up the homebound of both congregations, Phyllis, Nan, excuse me, and I, I apologize here. Excuse me while I get it sorted out. There we go. Thank you. Phyllis, 
Nancy, Virginia, Marilyn, and Bud. We pray God's blessings and guidance for Pastor Candace and New Hope Church, as well as all teachers, students, and school staff. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you, especially Donnie, Esther, Donna, Dawn, and Greg. Grant us your peace amid our fears. God of grace, into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And You shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sins, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. May God's peace sustain you and guide you. May God's peace sustain you and guide you. Body of Christ, you. Body of Christ. May God's peace sustain you and guide you. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, 
and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. 